So the holidays are coming and I need a job, but I'm a college student with no discernible skills. So when I'm offered a position as a shopping mall Santa, I take it. <laughs> How hard can it be? You have to wear a costume, you sit, <laughs> and you get your picture taken. The company's providing the costume. I could sit. <laughs> I've been sitting for years. <laughs> and picture taken, that's the heavy load that the photographer has to deal with. So I'm good with this. And then it's a few days after Thanksgiving, and I'm in the dressing room, putting on the costume. And I suddenly realize, I have no idea what to do. And I realize I have another skill, sweating profusely, and I'm adding padding and a heavy red suit lined with fur and trimmed with fur, and it only intensifies the sweating. So as I squish my way to center court and take my seat at Santa's throne, I'm worried. And there is a huge line of children waiting to see me. And the first little boy gets the nod to go, and he races toward me, and I flinch. <laughs> he is on my lap before I know it and has started his monologue. He knows what to do. <laughs> Thank goodness one of us does. And before I know it, he's off my lap. Apparently, a picture was taken, and the next child is ready to come up, and I still don't know what's going on. And this goes on all day. And days later, I start to get a little bit of confidence, a little tiny bit of confidence. I think I know what I can do now. Until a little girl is placed on my lap and she looks up at her mom and then she looks back at me and screams. <laughs> it's as if she's auditioning for a horror film. She screams so long and so loud, I lose hearing in my right ear. And so for the rest of the shift, I have to put every child on my left knee so I can hear them. Every time a small child is placed on my lap after that, I sort of cringe and shake a little bit. But it's fine, and now we're getting closer to Christmas, and I'm kinda getting a little rhythm going. And I'm actually at a shift at one point in time, and I'm not sweating, and I come out after the break, and the first child sits on my lap, and it's a wonderful moment. And then the second child comes and sits on my lap and proceeds to pee on me. <laughs> the photo was beautiful. He was so happy, smiling, his bladder was empty, <laughs> and I didn't know what was going on yet. And after that, yes, they're buying the photo, and I have to wave down the elves and tell them we're having a little wardrobe malfunction up here, and Santa needs another break. And mercifully, Christmas comes, and I'm done until 10 months later, when my boss calls and says, do you want to be Santa again? And what I can only describe, and I would swear to this in court, it was temporary insanity, I say yes. And in the second season, I start to get a little bit more confident. And I also start to notice there's a lot of college women who come to sit on Santa's lap. <laughs> but I find out that portraying Santa and dating Santa is a seasonal job. <laughs> and I continue to do this for the next couple of years, and I'm good with the kids. I'm really getting a nice rhythm going. And the only time that it ever stops me is whenever a child sits on my lap and says, Santa, can you bring dad home? He's in the military overseas. Or even, dad, can you bring him home? He's in prison. Or mom, can you, can you make mom better? She's been really sick. And it brings a tear to my eye. And eventually, it takes years but I start to figure it out. There's a little puzzle that's there. And one of them is, as the mom starts to say, Jimmy, it's your turn, come on up. I got it. Jimmy sits on my lap and I look at him and say, Jimmy, have you been a good boy this year? And he is in awe that I know his name. <laughs> and it's wonderful. But what's even more wonderful is the moment where I realize it's not just about the kids sitting on my lap, because I listen to every child that sits down and wants to tell me what they want for Christmas, but I also look up at the parents, because the parents are there and they're leaning in 
and they're listening and they've got that twinkle in their eye. They got that little bit of Christmas magic and they know, and that's what I learn, that when their child is happy at Christmas time, then they're happy at Christmas time. And if their child is really, really having a great Christmas, they're a great parent. And years later, when I become a parent, I don't need the suit. I got it figured out. I really know that if I can make a great Christmas for my kids, then it really truly is a very Merry Christmas. Thank you.